Hey everybody, welcome back. I am bored. COVID made me bored and today at the table I am playing Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance. This is a zombie side game. I don't have anything uh, zombie side. Um, I've never played any of the zombie side games. I've read it. Uh, there was actually a Kickstarter last, I think it was last year, and I actually did a, a sort of video in terms of uh, Kickstarters that I've backed and uh, most of them I've received. And uh, the Zombicide, the Marvel Zombies uh, Zombicide game was the one I was actually looking at. And it looked really intriguing because obviously I like the IP. I am, I'm a very theme person. You notice most of my games have, are all based on, on themes, Marvel, DC, superheroes, Dragon Ball Z. And I was actually really tempted to get it. And I decided not to. Uh, not because, I, there's, it's not a knock against the game. The, the sculpts look really great. The idea looked really great. It's interesting, you know, you got your... Your heroes turn zombies, they've been bitten, they've gone evil, and it's up to the rest of the other heroes to stop them and, 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 and kill them off in this zombie apocalypse. But I didn't do it because when I know, like, it's based on the Zombicide game, and with Zombicide, I was actually looking at, what was it, the uh, Dark Side um, Invader a version of it, and when I found out that, you know, I play mostly solo, as you guys know, and... With solo, you're actually controlling six characters in solo, and I'm sorry, I, I'm okay with maybe three or four, but six feels like a lot to me. And I, I lost that appeal. I lost that appeal for the game, and I decided not to back it up. So, fast forward to today, I actually, as I understand it, with the Kickstarter, while the Kickstarter was probably extremely successful, probably one of the most extremely successful Kickstarter uh, funding that's happened. Apparently the shipping has been abysmal and apparently there are a lot of people out there who committed already like four or five hundred dollars just to back the uh, uh, The pledge and then on top of that what they thought was maybe about a hundred hundred fifty dollar charge for shipping is now turning to several hundreds of dollars So it's in the thousands just for this game. So I I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't commit. I'm actually in hindsight. I'm glad I didn't uh, Put a pledge in and I, I do feel sorry for the people who did commit and now they're stuck with these absurd shipping charges. And it's not, I don't think Kimon is trying to, um, you know, rob anybody. It's just a matter of the world that we live in right now. Shipping sucks. Uh, shortages suck. Uh, supply, demand, chain, everything all sucks. But in any case, I was just, so happened to be on Amazon and I saw this. And it, at the time, it was temporarily out of stock. Now, usually what that means is you can still buy it, and when it comes in, it'll ship. I thought, okay, you know what? Um, actually, it was on a great deal. Um, I got this for $40, or less, I think. I can't remember. And it was less than what I think retail would be, because I saw it up for pre-order on some of my local gaming sites, uh, uh, gaming stores. And it was up for pre-order, and when I looked at the, even on the Come On website, it's not, it's, there's no information right now. It says coming soon. And at the date of this video, at least. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, well, I can, I can actually buy it. It's not in stock yet, but when it comes in, I can get it for the price that I paid. So I did it. Not knowing that, um, you know, it, from, the, uh, from my uh, game store, it said it was expected for uh, quarter three of 2023. That's next year. So I don't know. I don't know exactly where this fits, but all I know with this particular game, this is not the one that was in the Kickstarter. This is completely something separate. This is a, a partnership between, come on, zombie, Marvel Zombies and Spin Masters, who created, uh, who was partnered with, uh, come on, with um, Marvel United. And this has a very Marvel United feel. The box is about the same size. The insert looks the same. Uh, you get a handful of miniatures at the, and then uh, the rest of them are standees. Uh, it is sort of a zombicide or Marvel Zombies light. And the rule set is similar. There are some, I think there are some differences. I don't know the exact difference. And one of the differences here is you, you're not controlling six characters. You're, it's a maximum of four. So it's a one to four player game as opposed to one to six for regular Zombicide or Marvel Zombies. Now this one's one to four. And when you're playing solo, you're controlling four. I thought that was palatable. And given the, the nature of the game and it's supposed to be sort of a family entry, this is going to be in your, you know, your, your retail stores. Uh, you don't have to go to the game store to get these things. It's not sort of a specialty. It's kind of like the way Marvel United was distributed into the into retail stores. This will be there too. And it's meant as a, sort of an entry into the zombie-themed uh, board game. 
And I decided, you know, it, it fits it fits for me. I'm not looking for something complicated like Zombicide. This is a nice this is a nice entry for me. So uh, for, so it's one to four, and I control one to four players. And well, I was expecting this not to come until next year or early next year at the earliest, but it came this month. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, I'm filming this in. It's a couple of weeks ago, so November, mid November. On my local gaming stores, the, the website, it still shows as pre-order. So I don't know where the, if this fell off a, a ship or something, but uh, I'm glad I have it. It came in, and, and within a month of at the time that I had ordered it, I was not expecting it. It was sort of a purchase and forget it, and when it comes in, it comes in. But I'm happy to say that I've got the game in my hands. It is, it's a nice game. Uh, it has a very... Uh, like I said, a very Marvel United feel to it because uh, not the gameplay, but just the the packaging. It's Spin Masters uh, with with and it comes with miniatures. You have a set of six um, heroes and you have four, I guess, hero uh, zombies um, that that uh, you're fighting up against. And I think it's really I, I, so far I've played it and I like it. It has a nice sort of you know. Um, you know, it's a tabletop board game miniature. You're in the in the rule book. They've got missions, and you're trying to just complete those missions. There's about six or seven of them, I think. I think there's one that's published online as well, and I'm sure there'll be other ones that they'll print on or publish online for uh, for download. But it's not that hard to make your own game in this. It's it's pretty easy. Really, all it is is do something, kill some bad uh, zombies, try to stay alive, and then make your way out it's a very very typical zombie theme so in terms of the uh, components we, we've got a couple um couple of great sculpts here we've got the hulk and i think some of these sculpts um they i'm not sure if they coincide with the same sculpts in the kickstarter but if not that's okay they're still good the detailing is still good i don't know how it compares with the kickstarter um, this is a uh, winter soldier and uh it's pretty nice I, i'm not a, i'm not a huge miniature painter so um, i'm gonna leave them as is we got Spider-Man, we have Vision, and Wasp, and I think Black Panther. But uh, the skulls overall are pretty good. And when it comes to the uh, superhero uh, zombies, poor Iron Man, he got, he got bit. And uh, he's, a, he's a zombie now. And they're sort of a, sort of a puke green color. There's Cap. He's uh, getting ready to throw that shield at you. And uh, we've got Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. So pretty good sculpts. They look pretty gross, just like the pictures here. Um, and so it's it's the team of heroes up against these um, zombie heroes, I guess, if you want to call it that. Now, in terms of component quality, uh, I think the board. Uh, comes with four tiles. I think uh, Zombicide or Marvel Zombies comes with like six or seven or eight. I don't know something like that. They are double sided, and sure, they they obviously had to cut down on the the amount of components given the price point. Again, this is a, a sort of an entry into the Zombicide world, and um, it's okay. Uh, the quality is really good. I, I think I think it's uh, the the uh, artwork and the color. It, it's really nice. Uh, one thing I guess I'll note is um, in the game. Uh, there is such thing as line of sight, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, you can see that there's a sort of a street view and there's an indoor view. I don't know if Zombicide plays the same way. There is a line of sight uh, as well, um, but I'm, I'm sure it, it, it is like that. So I'll get to that in a minute, but the artwork overall is, is really nice. And like I said, the miniature quality is really nice. Uh, for the zombies that uh, are in the game, except for the superhero zombies, everybody else is represented by standees. And again, this is more for cost effectiveness. Your average family who wants to play sort of a family night game, they're not going to spend 100, 150, 200, or get Galactus for like 250 uh, just for this game. So this is a good entry point. So it makes sense that these are all standees. So these are runners. Uh, each zombie here has a particular toughness value, which is basically their defense. I think walkers and runners are one, and then you have brutes that are two. And they also have a set number of actions that they can take when they activate. I think... Uh, brutes and walkers have one action, and runners have two actions that they can take. Zombie heroes, they, uh, their, their toughness value or defense value depends on which character, but they always have two uh, activation points. 
And here are the walkers. So I think there are 30 of these walkers, 10 of the brutes, and 10 of the runners. So altogether, you're talking about 50 standees, and each standee with a, with a standee base. Uh, there is no way that you're going to fit everything back into the box with the insert if you have all the standees in their stands. For me, I've opted to um, go the path of difficulty by leaving a handful, the brutes and the walkers, so that's 20, without their stands. I pack them in separately. Everything else I can fit. So with the, sorry, the runners and the brutes, the walkers, I can have them all in their stands and I can actually keep them in the, uh, the insert. But the brutes and the runners, I actually keep them in a baggie and I have to put the bases on them every time I want to play. So it is kind of annoying, but that's only 20 that I have to go through. It's not that, not that long. And then you have uh, bystanders uh, that you have in the game. And some of these are objective based. So sometimes you need to rescue them and they offer certain benefits to you if you're able to, if you're able to rescue them. It takes an action to rescue them. Oh, by the way, that was Pepper Potts. You've got Pepper Potts, J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, who else? We got Sharon Carter. We got Wong. And we got Okoye or Okoya whatever her name is. I can never pronounce those ones right. And Happy. Happy's in here too. So they're all on stands as well. They're standees as well. And those ones I can actually keep on their stands and still fit in the box. And you've got your character cards. Your character cards that come with the game. Let me see here. I'll just give a quick overview of the cards. Again, I think it plays very similar. I think one of the differences with, uh, with Marvel Zombies, you get a nice... I think it's a plastic board and, and pegs and you can keep track of all the stats. So definitely when you're talking about quality for this price point, for this type of game, the quality is good. But I'm not comparing this directly with the Kickstarter because obviously the production value is much, much better and, and, and much you get much more, um, but obviously at a higher price point. So here we got Hulk and you've got his power level here. At the start of your turn, you will always increase your power level by one. You've got his health, which he takes damage and you have his different abilities depending on the amount of experience. So just like Zombicide, you are gaining experience as you eliminate bad guys. And depending on, I guess, the range of your experience, uh, certain things will take effect. So in this case, if you're in the blue initial uh, experience, you get this. If you're in the yellow, if you're in the red, uh, sort of orange and then red. And here's his access to his ability in terms of what he can do when he attacks. Uh, every player where every character has three actions that they can take, at least minimum three actions. Obviously, as, as you see, if he gains experience and he's in this sort of yellow area, he will get a plus one action. I don't know if there are other um, abilities or cards that give you an extra action. Some of them do, or a free action. And one of the actions that you can do is you can do an attack. Another action you can do is move. You can move into a, from one zone into another zone. You can interact with an object as an action. You can rescue a bystander as an option. You can actually power up as an option. So if I was at zero and I want to power up, you actually power up two levels. Um, and I think um, another action is opening doors. So there are doors in this game. So it takes an action to open a door. And it can, uh, you sort of have a, you know, if you're surrounded by zombies or, 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 or uh, superhero zombies, for every zombie, it takes an extra action to escape them or to move out of the zone. So there's sort of a, I forgot the, what the term is, but uh, you're, you're obviously, it costs you to move away. So uh, out of a zone with filled with, with enemies. So it's, it's one action per enemy that's in the zone with you. But here you can see he can just sm uh, smash. Uh, the first uh, notation here indicates that he's a sort of a melee because the, the range is zero. And the number of dice he would roll is three. And it's a successful hit of four or higher. So when it comes to the zombies, it's kind of an all or nothing deal. Uh, whatever number of hits you have, you can assign them however you want. But say, for example, brutes, they have a toughness value of two. So it takes at least two successful hits to kill them. Uh, and for walkers and, and runners, it takes one hit. So as, as long as you can do it in one, one attack, then you can assign your hit values and, and defeat those um, zombies. And for every zombie you defeat, you gain one XP for those zombies. Superhero zombies, they give you uh, more experience, but they also have a higher toughness value. So I think like Captain America is like three. So you need to at least sign, like, get at least three successful hits and assign those hits to him in order to defeat him. And he would give you three experience points. 
so pretty much that's the same uh, for everyone, except Hulk is the one with the, probably the most health, which makes sense. Then you got Vision. And you see with Vision, he has sort of the symbol, he's ranged. So you have a zero to one range, which means uh, zones or rooms in, on the board. And he rolls three dice on a four or higher. It is a successful hit. And he has his various actions that take place. So for the most part, each of these characters, they do feel kind of unique. Uh, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's totally thematic, but there is some, some I guess you can tie it in a little bit. So for example, um, with, um, with Black Panther, before attacking with Vibranium Claws, which is his, uh, his melee attack, you can spend one power to have enemies suffer minus one toughness to a minimum of one, and you can reroll any dice. So kind of thematic. It's it's Black Panther, right? I mean, he's he's a little bit tougher. Look at look at the Winter Soldier. Assassinate. Each time you attack with Combat Blade, uh, you you may automatically eliminate one Walker or Runner in your zone. So again, kind of ties in with Win Winter Soldier. He is kind of an assassin, and it's a quick hit. Um, Spider-Man here, his heroic rescue. Once during your turn, you may spend one power to move one bystander or one superhero from an adjacent zone into your zone. So again, it's his webbing. And so again, kind of thematic, makes sense. So a lot of these um, uh, have different various abilities. So when you're playing with, the, with at least more than two or more people, you each would be controlling up. It's a total of four. You have to have four characters at all times. So if you're playing with two people, each person controls two. If you have three, one person controls uh, one and the other. Um, uh, one, or yeah, one person can, each person controls one except for one person who controls two. And if you have four players, obviously one to one. So at any given time, you'll always have four characters in this game. I have tried with less than that, and it is more difficult because you kind of need the extra abilities or extra actions. But you could easily just throw in an extra action. Um, instead of three actions, it's four actions just to give you a fighting chance, and that might level out the the difficulty. Because sometimes you don't may not want to throw in every, like four characters and have to manage all of them. Because in addition to managing their actions, you have to manage their XP, and it's all tracked on this dial. I think on, in regular the Kickstarter, I think it has a, a nicer uh, peg and a pegboard system. So this is just a sliding cardboard tracker. Starts at zero. Every time you kill an enemy or kill a zombie, you gain uh, one XP. Or in case of uh, in the case of superhero zombies, it's the number of uh, their toughness uh, you gain it. And obviously, as you reach certain zones, that's what's depicting in your your character card. You gain those extra abilities as you reach those zones. And you can see the red zone only has the one. So once you stop here, that's it. You, you can get more uh, experience as you're just not going to go past that. Can you lose experience? I actually don't know. I don't think you can lose experience in this game. But with each zone that you enter for your experience, it can have negative consequences. More zombies can come out. And it's always whoever is on the highest zone. So if you have three of your characters still in the blue zone, but one of your characters managed to get to orange, any effect that calls uh, to refer to the zone uh, of experience that you're in, it's always the person at the highest zone. So orange in this case. So. You've got uh, a couple cards. You've got hero traits. Every uh, Oh, that's one of the other actions that you can take. You can actually draw from the hero trait de deck. And these are like special kind of one-off abilities that you can use. Uh, so for example, this one is discard before attacking and spend one power to roll plus three dice. So in addition to the dice that you roll. One of the other things I forgot to say is you can, um, when you are attacking and you're rolling your dice, you can spend power to add dice to your attack pool. So at any time, as long as you have power to supply that. I think that was one of the things I kind of missed when I read the rules. So during this one, you could you can use and discard it and gain plus three dice during your roll. Sometimes it could be helpful. And uh, any character at any given time can have a maximum of two of these hero traits. So you can spend an action to gain a hero trait. Uh, for the bystanders, they each have their character cards. And for bystanders, uh, you, when you rescue them, you would take their standee off the um, off the board because they're sort of following you now. And you would take their card, and it would be part of your it'd be sort of part of your character that you can use. So, for example, let's look at Happy Hogan. Once during your turn, you may spend one power to push all enemies in your zone into an adjacent zone. So that is useful. And once during your turn, you can always you know sort of exhaust it. Uh, sideways to let you know that you've used it already, but each character can only have a maximum of one or rescue one bystander. If you rescue additional bystanders, you obviously have to 
get rid of the one that you have. And there's a special rule here. It's very interesting. You know, if you're if you're a Hulk and you're walking around with Happy and zombies show up, you can choose to use Happy as a meat shield. And by doing so, you instead of, you know, if a zombie attacks you and every zombie hits you with one one wound, Happy can take that wound. You know, throw him forward, he's a meat shield, he takes that one wound, and as a result, he dies. He gets removed, and as a result, you lose power. I think one power, and you have to discard one uh, one heroic, tra heroic trait that you carry, if you're carrying any. So I think that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know why you would, if you're going to rescue them, why use them as a meat shield. But in any case, every uh, hero character here can at least can carry or have one bystander with them. For the zombies, uh, when they uh, when they come out, when they spawn, you'll be drawing from the zombie spawn deck, and the zombie spawn deck will show you uh, how many zombies are going to spawn depending on the highest experience of one of whichever characters that you have. So if you have a character that is in the orange experience, you would be spawning three runners. And there are usually two to three or maybe four spawn points on the board, and you typically go in clockwise order. There is one um, spawn point denoted as one, and the other ones are sort of a generic, and you'll go in clockwise order, drawing one spawn card for every spawn point and following the directions on here. So you'll have a couple, so for example, this one's a zombie hero. So when you see this card, you'll be, you'll be randomly taking a card of the zombie hero and putting him on the board wherever the spawn point is. You'll also have, let's see, let's take a look here. You'll have some special conditions sometimes. So for example, if you drew this card, you'd be spawning a brute. And depending, obviously, it'd be all brutes. But this is not spawning brutes. This is actually an extra activation. So it, these, um, the values here basically apply to the type, the zombie type. So if all your heroes were in blue, no one activates. But if, all your, so if at least one of your hero was in yellow or higher, all the brutes would have an extra activation. And that basically means they either move closer to you or if they're in your zone, they would be attacking you. You also have this one which is you spawn the number of brutes, and then you activate them right away. You'd activate only the ones that you spawn, not the ones that are on the board, as I understand it. So these are just the ones that spawn, get activated. So those are your zombie spawn cards, and when I do the playthrough, it'll make more sense. You'll have objectives on the board, and sometimes, depending on the mission setup, the objectives will tell you what they mean or what they do. Um, for your zombie heroes, You've got the four, and they each have their own ability. So, for example, Captain America here, you can see he has a health or toughness of three. So it's at least three hits assigned to him before you can knock him out. And he has a special ability. When, he, when his zone is attacked, you roll one die for each successful hit. On a five or higher, cancel that hit. So, thematic, he's got a shield. You've got Iron Man. His health value is four. If he hands his activation in a range 1 to 2 with, and within line of sight, and we'll talk about line of sight in a minute, to a zone with any superhero, he attacks that zone. So again, thematic, he's got his pulse, pulse cannons that he shoots out of his hands. You've got Doctor Strange. When he activates, if he is not in the zone with a superhero, as his first action, he moves into the closest zone with a superhero. So typically, uh, with other characters and other zombies, bystanders count as um, characters with zombie movement. So if you if your superhero is is uh, you know pretty far from a spawn point and the zombies there are closer to a bystander, they will go to the bystander. Bystanders can be killed and again every time they get killed even if you're not using them as a meat shield but they get killed because you're, you've left them, uh, you will lose the one power and a hero heroic trait. So it's best to try to protect them if you can. And they only take one hit. But you do have certain characters such as Sharon or you know, Sharon Carter, she's got that little fist. That little fist means that for each attack against her, so if she has two zombies and each zombie takes their turn, their action to attack her with one wound, she gets to roll dice. On a five or higher, she blocks that hit or blocks that attack. So you have some uh, of your bystanders that actually have some kind of a fighting chance. Then you've got Scarlet Witch. She is, uh, superheroes must re-roll all hits when in her zone. So kind of that, you know, witchy witchness of her. 
So there you go. So those are your four. And again, given the entry price of this game, I'm not expecting to have a lot of superhero villains or uh, hero zombies. So it, 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 it makes sense with this price point. So that's pretty much it. The one thing I want to quickly cover is range. And I'll probably do that during my playthrough too. But when you have the board set up, you'll typically be connecting um, the four boards together. And uh, zones are separated by uh, a building wall or sort of the crosswalk. So this is considered one zone. This is considered a zone. Over here is considered a zone. Over here is a zone. And then you've got room zones or rooms. And those rooms are divided by their interior walls. So you'll see that this particular board, in this building, there are three rooms. One, two, three. They are separated by these doors. Now, as I understand it, these doors are open. But you'll see that into the building, these doors are closed. It takes one action to open these doors. And there are tokens to denote when these doors are open. Uh, depending on the mission, certain doors are color-coded. So maybe you have to uh, meet a certain condition before you can open them. But once you're inside, uh, you have full visibility into each of those rooms. And when we're talking about uh, line of sight and range, with, when you're inside a room, your line of sight goes no further than one adjacent room. So if I was in here, the furthest I can see is over here, which makes sense anyways, because I can't see this way. But I can also see here because there's a door here as well. But let's just say there wasn't. And in this, uh, if I were in here, I can see into this room and into this room. So obviously, if I had another room or more additional rooms connected here, you wouldn't be able to see past one. When you're on the street, your line of sight is unblocked as long as you don't cross a wall. So if I was standing here, I have full line of sight all the way to here. My character may have a limited range, but in terms of line of sight, I'm able to see all the way across unobstructed. So if I was here, I'd be able to see all the way down here. But from here, I'm unable to see this zone. I can see all these zones except for that zone. Movement in this game is orthogonal only. There's no diagonal. And I believe line of sight uh, is, is, can go either way. So if you're in the street and you're looking, let's say this door was open and you're looking in, you can see no further than one room. So from the street, I'd be here and I can look into here, but I cannot see in here. And that's for targeting. That's for if you have a ranged character. So it'll make more sense when I start to do my play. So I just wanted to note that. And uh, and especially if I forget to say it during during my playthrough. So, so I'm going to do a setup. I'm going to play the first mission. Well, the first mission is actually a tutorial mission. But actually, as a quick uh, reference, in the rule book, you've got all the rules. And you have, in the last, I think, six or seven pages, you've got the missions. And I think, like I said, there are seven. There are seven, eight missions. There's a ninth mission online. But the first mission here, or sorry, the, no, there are nine missions, including the tutorial. So there's a tenth mission that you can download online. So the tutorial mission is very simple. It's just uh, rescue, uh, rescue someone and get out of there. But it gives you all the instructions that you need for setting it up, what tiles you need or what uh, tokens you need. It gives you sort of a little story. It doesn't really matter. It gives you an objective and any special setups and the sort of, um, uh, I guess, win condition, which is usually escape. Escape with all the things that they've asked you to do. In this game, uh, I believe the uh, losing condition is if one of your characters dies. I mean, you sort of... Um, Win as a team and lose as a team. So I'm sure you could do it so that you know it's not until all characters are dead. But you know, for the if you're playing with more than two two or more people, <laughs> the one person who dies is going to be sitting for a very long time. Uh, gameplay time is not too bad. Setup is not too bad. And again, it, because it's a, a much smaller scale than Zombicide. So I'm gonna get a game set up for uh, the first um, mission in this uh, in this book. I think it's called Outbreak. And I'll get that set up, and once I have that set up, we'll do a we'll do a run through. See you soon. All right, I've got my board set up for Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance. Uh, this is Mission One Outbreak, and I've got my board set up. I've chosen my four characters. I've got uh, the Hulk. I've got the Hulk, Spider Man, 
uh, Winter Soldier, and Vision. And in the starting manual, they start here, or sorry, the mission setup, they start in here. Now, I forgot to actually mention a couple things about the tiles from my um, intro, is uh, every tile inside the room has uh, a symbol that's an exclamation point, and that typically is a spawn point when the room is, a um, or the building is, uh, I guess, opened or revealed. And you also have a symbol that shows where the bystander goes. So depending on the mission setup, different rules may apply, but if you're just playing normal uh, with and, and there's no specifics regarding bystanders, then you'd always have at least one bystander card in the room that depicts it. Now, what happens is, like I said, every building has a door. The door is closed by default, and uh, it takes one action to open that door. Once the, once the door is open, it's always open. The moment you open it, you immediately spawn one card, um, spawn card for every room in the building that has the exclamation point. So for example, in this one, there's there's two. So it would be one in this one and one in here. And then that's it. Follow the whatever the spawn card says, and that's it. Once the door is open, it, does, it never gets closed again. And then after you've done that and activated uh, the spawn if it needs to, you would then reveal the bystander that's in here. Now there is a, uh, during the, the phases, which I'll be going through, bystanders do have an action. If they're in a room and there's no zombies in the adjacent room, they move one room or one area or zone closer to a superhero because uh, they're trying to get to you because they want you to rescue them. Another thing I, I, I didn't forgot to point out was this thing, which is the Avenger symbol. This is sort of a, a special, um, I guess, uh, power up that you can have if you're in the zone where it is. And this is, again, according to setup. And they have a little reference card here. And this reference card is, if you are in the zone as an action, you can do an attack. It's ranged of zero to one, um, for zero to one range. You roll the number of dice depending on the number of enemies in the target zone, so within two. And heroes are ignored for the attack, and you can use it once, and then you flip it over, and then you can use it a second time, and then that's it. So it's sort of the, you know, things are getting kind of crazy. You, you, you need to take out a group of zombies. You might want to get yourself here, use that ability, and then it, if you're in here, you don't have to use the ability. It's just an extra attack option that you can use, but it t does take an action to do it. And uh, you'll see that on the board I have an exit, and I have my spawn points, one here, and you'll see that it's denoted number one. And number one means that this is the starting um, point when you're doing the spawn phase, and you'll go clockwise order. So it'll be this one, and then there's a spawn point here, and a spawn point down here. See, Yeah, you can see that. I've got my characters set up over here, and they each have an activation token so that you know when you've used them, and you just flip them over to their other side, and that, that way you know. So in terms of order, there is no specific order. You go whoever you think would benefit you the most, and then once they're done doing their three actions, then you flip them over so that you know. And I've got their experience dials ready to go and set up. And I've got my cards on the side that I need, and I've got my zombicide dice, which is, I think, your typical zombicide dice. It's got the teeth mark, I think, representing one. I thought it was always, I thought six was the, the favorite to put a special symbol. So I've got those di dice right here, and I've got my zombies on uh, off, to the, off to the side. I've got my bystander standees off to the side, and I've got my uh, hero villains or hero zombies, zombie heroes, I forgot what they call them here, zombie heroes off to the side as well. And we're ready to go. So in terms of this, this is Mission 1 Outbreak. It's supposed to be considered easy, and it has sort of a little bit of flavor text. It was worse than we feared. This virus has infected anyone that, that he has come in contact with, with civilian and superheroes alike. Even Tony Stark has joined the ranks of the undead. There's no time to lose. We must act. We must... We have to secure the escape of as many civilians and gather as many supplies from the infection zone as we can. Maybe Ms. Potts knows why this is happening. Hopefully, we can find some means of containing this outbreak. So your objectives here are to do a rescue operation. You have to accomplish these objectives in any order. You need to take all the objectives, and all the objectives are labeled right here with these little tokens. And there's four, one basically one in each room. So you need to go find them and get them. It takes one action to take them. And when you take them, I believe each objective gives five experience points to the superhero who takes it. And your second objective is to find and rescue Pepper Potts. So Pepper Potts is one of these bystanders that has been placed face down in the area that has donated to, 
is uh, designated for bystanders. So as, again, as you reveal the building or open the building, you will reveal the bystanders. So hopefully, hopefully we'll find her soon. Then after you've done all that, you need to escape via the exit with all superheroes and pepper pots. Any superhero may leave through this zone for free at the end of their turn, as long as there are no enemies in it. There's a little special setup, threaten civilians. Sh uh, we shuffle pepper pots, bystander cards randomly with three other bystander cards and place them face down in the zones featuring the bystander symbol, which I've done already. And of course, like I said, if you pick up an objective, you gain five XP for whichever character. So we get to start. And in terms of the phases, we have the player phase. And this goes in any order, whoever, whoever wants to go first or whoever wants to go. The first thing you do is you'll increase your power track. So the power track goes up by one. You're going to refresh any activation tokens, any, any uh, items that you may have exhausted. And then you get to activate your superheroes, in which case you get to do the three actions. And of those actions that you can take, you can move. That means moving into one zone. And to move into... Um, to move out of a zone with an enemy, it's one extra action for every enemy in your zone. Uh, you can spend an action to open a door. And if it's a building, you would reveal those uh, spawn points first and then the bystanders. And uh, the third action you could take is to gain a trait, which is a her heroic trait. You can only do that once per turn, and you can't have more than two heroic trait cards. You can also take an action to power up, which is to gain two power. You can take an action to rescue a bystander as long as there are no enemies in the zone. And once you rescue a bystander, you actually would increase your hero, uh, your power track all the way to the maximum. And you cannot have more than one bystander. You can do an interaction with an object, which is either interact based on the mission objectives, or you can, in this case, we'll be taking the objective. And we gain 5 XP if we do that. And we can attack. We can spend, uh, we can do an attack and we can spend power to roll extra dice. And we want to deal the hits equal to the target's toughness in a single attack. And there is a specific priority order. I forgot to mention that. So when you're doing an attack, if the zone has multiple variations or multiple um, uh, zombies, your attack values, you don't get to choose and pick who gets it. It goes in a particular pecking order. So target priority is always zombie heroes first, then brutes, then walkers, then runners. And on the back of the rule book, they actually have this nice little chart. It tells you target priority. It tells you, obviously, which, uh, which type of uh, zombie. It tells you the number of actions that they have, and this will happen during their phase, and the number of amount of toughness and the experience that you get when you kill them. So this is actually pretty good to have. Actually, it's probably something that you could probably you know, print out on a small reference card and have it rather than have this rulebook all the time. And after the players have done all their turn, you'll go through the enemy phase, and the enemies activate. They will activate by taking the number of actions that they are allowed. So in this case, uh, walkers and runners have one action. Sorry, walkers and brutes have one action. Zombie heroes have two and runners have two. And they're going to basically move towards the closest uh, non-zombie. Uh, so it's either the hero or a bystander if they're on the board. And if you're already in the zone with you, they will attack. They'll use their actions to attack. And they deal, they deal one uh, wound. And if they... Um, so happen to kill a bystander, again, the bystander effect takes place. Um, and then after the enemies activate, you can activate the bystanders, and they, again, move towards the closest superhero into areas where there are no zombies. And the next part of the enemy phase would be to spawn the enemies, and um, they would go into in terms of the spawn points. And then you'll have the end phase, which is any end phase effects. Uh, you check to see if any... Um, superheroes are eliminated, and then you would start the next round. So we're going to start first, and that means everybody here, I forgot to mention one thing too. Character cards, to track these, uh, your, your values, they have these little sliders, these clip-on sliders. Now, I am not a fan of these clip-on sliders. I really hate it. But again, given the price point and given the market that this is aiming for, kind of makes sense. The fortunate part is these are perfectly spaced so that when you put them on, it's enough to hold them but not enough to scratch them. So as I slide this ac across, it's not scratching the card. So, you know, kudos to uh, Spin Masters for, for doing that. And there is kind of a, a waxy uh, coat to this card. So I think that helps and prevents scratching. So that's actually a welcome, um, I guess, design uh, decision, decision that they made. So right now, everyone is going to increase their power by one. And again, I think... 
maybe it'd be better to have, you know, a better board or maybe dice to keep track of this because it's kind of annoying to do it every time, but that's okay. And we're ready to go. So we're going to start with, let's see, we want to open, open some doors just so I can show you. So we're going to take Spider-Man and as his first action, we're going to move into this zone. So it takes one action to move in one zone and has his second action, we're going to open this door. So there are tokens that you use to denote that a door is open or been smashed open. So we'll just place it here to let us know that it's been open. Cannot be closed again. The moment we do that, we are going to reveal any spawns. So there's a spawn exclamation here. So we're going to draw from the top of the spawn deck and we get <laughs> a zombie hero. So for the zombie hero, I'm going to just randomly take it from this pile and it's the cap. So we'll put the cap up here just so I know. And we'll take his miniature and we're going to place him here. Now he doesn't activate, he's just there. And now we're going to reveal the bystander that's in here and it's Sharon Carter. So we're going to take her standee we're right here and we're going to place her here. So I know that this is kind of a top down view. So I'm actually going to place Sharon on her side. I mean, you can kind of make out the miniatures, but uh, we'll have uh, we'll have Sharon right here. And then that's it. So Spider-Man still has one more action, in which case I think what he'll do is he'll just do a draw a heroic trait. So we're going to pull a card from the top of the her heroic trait card. True Grit. Discard when enemies move into your zone, perform one free attack targeting uh, the, your zone. So I'm going to put that up here to keep it with Spidey. And I'm going to flip over his activation. He has done his activation. Now we're going to move, do another activation. And I think what we'll do is uh, let's go with um, <laughs> one, two, three. That won't get him very far. Um, so I think what we'll do is let's 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 put Winter Soldier in there or the Hulk. No, we're gonna put Vision. So I'm gonna send in Vision. He's gonna use uh, his first two actions. He's gonna move one, two, and because Vision is in this room, there's an open door. He has line of sight of the cap because it's a maximum of one room. So, and he has a range of between zero and one, so he can do an attack. So I'm going to do an attack as my third action. Uh, he's going to roll three attack dice according to his energy beams uh, attack. And I'm going to spend one power to give myself one more, one more dice to roll. So I'm going to roll these three dice. Okay. So here I rolled, uh, I rolled a two fours, a five and a two. And vision is a successful hit on a four or higher. So I have three. I have three successful hits. Captain America's toughness is three. So when his zone is attacked, roll one die for each successful hit on a five or higher, cancel that hit. So I'm going to keep these ones here just so I remember. And I'm going to take the other three dice that I have to roll. So. I have three hits, I'm gonna roll three dice, and on a five or higher, I'll cancel one. Okay, so my first one, I rolled a one. The second hit, I rolled a four. And my third hit, we'll take that one, a four. Okay, so on a five or higher, he would cancel it, which means all three are successful. He has a toughness of three, he's dead. So when I do that, he actually doesn't get removed from the game. He can get cycled back in and reappear because he's a zombie, right? So once I've done that, that means um, Vision will get three experience because in terms of uh, experience being awarded for zombie heroes, they get awarded based on their toughness. So he gets three. So we're going to put this one back into the zombie pile and I'll shuffle that again the next time a zombie hero comes up. Great job. So that's done. So that's going to end Vision's turn. Now we get to go with, let's see, the Hulk or Winter Soldier. In this case, you know, you're not really, not, not, nothing really bad is going to happen no matter where you go. So I think we'll try to go to this one. I'm going to take Winter Soldier. He's going to move one. And then as an action, he's going to open this door for two. And when we do that, we're going to reveal, uh, sorry, we're going to spawn a zombie in here. And it's going to be a walker. So because all our heroes are currently in the blue experience zone, we're going to only spawn, spawn two walkers. These are the slow moving kind of dumb, dumb dumbs that just stand there. So we're going to put these two here. So I'm going to lay them down here as well. 
so that you can see them. And then we reveal the bystander that's in here. Pepper pots. Yeah, okay, pepper pots. Okay, so it's pepper. Pepper is in here. Now keep in mind that pepper is a bystander. And when these guys activate, they will want to eat her. So we're going to have to try to protect her. And if we if she dies, we lose the game, right? Because that's one of the objectives. So that was uh, Bucky's second, or Winter Soldier's second action. His third action is he's going to move in. We're going to send him right inside. He's inside the building with these zombies. Okay? And that ends his turn. The Hulk is here. And uh, you know what? Let's... Um, Let's move him in. So we're going to move him into this position. We're going to put him right there. And actually, you know what? We'll move one. So that was one, two. He's in here. And I think as a third action, he will attack. So he's going to use his Hulk smash. He's going to roll three dice on a four or higher. These walkers only have a toughness of one. Okay, so I get one. I get one hit which means I'm going to take out one of the walker zombies. And when I do that, I gain one XP because he's worth one XP. And that's it. So that ends the Hulk's turn. I could have rolled an extra dice if I wanted to, but I didn't. And that ends all the hero's turn. So everyone has taken their turn. And now we're going to move into the enemy phase. So the enemy phase, right away, we're going to activate. So any zombies on the board, are going to activate. So this zombie's on the board, that means he's going to attack someone in his own. He doesn't need to move. He has one action and he's going to attack. So we'll give that that hit to the Hulk. So he's going to take one hit, one wound. So now he has a health of four. That ends the activation there. Now for bystanders, we have Sharon Carter and Pepper. Pepper is already in the room with a hero and there's a zombie in there, so she's not going to move. But Sharon, Sharon's free to move. So she's going to move into this room to be beside Vision. And once that's done, now we go into the spawn. So starting with spawn point one over here, we're going to draw a card, and it's a zombie hero. So we're going we're gonna to shuffle this again, and let's draw the top card. It is Iron Man. So Iron Man comes out, and he's on the board. He's going to be in this zone. He doesn't activate, he's just there. And then we're going to start with this next spawn point, and it is two brutes. So we'll take our brutes and we'll place them here. Again, I'm going to face them down so that you can see them. And the third spawn point, which is down here, we are going to get four walkers and they're going to rush. So they spawn and then they activate. So we'll take our four walkers. We're going to put them down here. And when they activate, they move one zone closer to a hero. So we're just going to move them into this zone because I think right now the closest would be to go in here or go towards Spider-Man. And that's it. We've done the spawning and no bystanders are dead, so we're okay. We go to the end phase. If we need to refresh anything, we would refresh it. But as of right now, we're okay. So now we'll start a new player phase and we're gonna flip all over their activation point tokens and they each gain one power to start. And we're ready to go. So right now, I think let's focus in here. We're going to do, I think, uh, let's go with Bucky, right? Let's try to, let's try to, well, well Iron Man's going to be coming in, so that's going to be difficult. So let's, let's take Winter Soldier first. As his first action, he cannot rescue Pepper because there's a zombie in there. So he's going to attack. But when he attacks... Each time you attack with a combat blade, you may automatically eliminate one walker. So I don't even need to roll. I'm going to kill this walker. It's going to go off. I gain one XP because of it. And that's it. My second action, I rescue Pepper. So Pepper, I take the standee off. And I'm going to put this card beside Bucky. So now he has this ability that Pepper brings. Once during your turn, you may spend one power to draw one hero trait. Because normally, under normal circumstances, you can only do it once per turn with an action. So uh, that was his first action, second action, and his third action. He could go out here, but he's not going to. So what he'll do is he'll draw a heroic trait, and let's see what he gets. He gets discard before attacking, add plus one to the dice results, and ignore target priority for this attack. So that's not too bad. So that's focused. So let's give that to him. And that ends his turn. Our next turn here is going to be the Hulk. 
so the Hulk is uh, I think we're just gonna go after after Iron Man. So let's see. You have five health. At the start of each of your turns, gain one power for each wound. Oh, so he should technically have one more because he has one wound. So he's actually three power. So we're going to move. We're going to go one, two, and as my third action, I'm going to attack Iron Man. Okay. Does he have any special uh, conditions? No. He has, he has health of four. I'm going to spend my three power to give me three extra dice on top of the three dice that I roll. So I'm rolling six dice. Four or higher, I need four or more. Oh, that's not bad. So I rolled a one, three, uh, two sixes, a four, and a five. So this is enough. Because his health is four, I just came down, two hands, pounded right on him. Iron Man is dead. And the Hulk gains four XP, which puts him to five. I forgot on my next activation for Winter Soldier, I have to pick up the objective. So that's okay. That was worth it. So Hulk uh, successfully uh, destroyed uh, Iron Man. And I believe that was his third action. So he's done. Okay. So now we'll go to Vision. Vision is going to go ahead and his first action, he'll rescue Sharon Carter. So he'll rescue Sharon Carter because there's no zombies in that zone. He rescues her. He's going to take her card. We're here, right here. And she has, after performing a ranged attack, you may spend one power to reroll. So that's good because he is a ranged character. And that's his first action. His second action, he's going to move in here. And as his third action, he's actually going to collect this um, objective, which gives him five experience. That puts him at eight. So he is now in the yellow experience zone. And that ends his turn. Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man could go in here, but he might risk because there's going to be two activations. So let's see. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can mitigate some of these uh, these players. Once during your turn, you may spend one power to move one bystander or superhero from adjacent towards you. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave it be. Instead, I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw another heroic trait. I'm going to draw another ho heroic trait as my first action. Discard when enemies enter your zone. Immediately move one zone. Oh, that's good. Okay. And as my second action, I'm going to power up. So I'm going to get to four. I know that's kind of a waste, but I might as well do it. And my third action, I don't have to do anything. I could move. And I think that's fine. I'll just leave it. So that ends Spider-Man's activation. We now go into the enemy activation. The walkers have one action, and they're just going to move forward. So they're all going to be there. The brutes also have one action, and they're going to move forward into here. OK. Uh, we don't have any bystanders left on the board because they've been rescued. It is now, um, actually, our end goal right now is we, we, we just need to collect all the objectives and then get out of there. So hopefully we can do that. So now we're going to spawn, starting from the first one. And the Hulk is right there, so hopefully it's a good one. Or not a bad one. So here we go. We got four walkers that spawn. So we're going to take our four walkers. It's going to be a little crowded in here. I'm going to place them face down. One, two, three, and four. And they're all in the same zone as the Hulk, which means he's going to have to do some damage control there. The next spawn point over here. We've got, oh, sorry, you know what? I missed something. We are, Vision is currently in the orange zone, which means it's six that gets spawned. So this is a crowd of, of zombies sitting in here, and uh, it's all Vision's fault. So we're going to put in six. What a mess that is. And now we spawn the next one, which will be one brute because it's in the orange. So that brute would be right here. And in this third spawn point, uh, we're going to get three brutes, and then they activate. So the three brutes will show up at down here, and they activate, which means that they go into this zone. So as you can see, when it spawns, they come out, out very quickly. They may be slow moving, except for the runners. But they may be slow moving, but there can be a lot on the board. And that is kind of why you need four characters. I think with two characters, 
you, you, there's no way you can manage, at least with only three actions. So, you know, you can do a house rule and give your character a few more actions just to help. But this is what happens, and it can get overwhelming. So, but I like it. I like this. It, it is the feeling of a zombie invasion, and, and I like that. That's, it's very thematic. Okay, so no bystanders died. Now we go into the end phase where we refresh any cards. We didn't have any cards to refresh. So we're going to go ahead and flip our activation token for each character and also bump them up one power so that they're primed and ready to go. The Hulk really could use some extras, and he gets an extra one because of his ability, so he gets two. And now we can start. So we can start with the Hulk if we want to, but I think what I want to do is I think I'm going to start with Bucky. Start with Winter Soldier. So the first action is I'm going to retrieve this objective and I gain five experience, so I'm up to six. My second action, I'm going to move into this space. And my next action, I'm going to use this ability. I'm going to use this ability. So, so this is my third action. I'm using the Avengers. Roll one die for each enemy in the targeted zone. I have a range of zero to two. Heroes are ignored for this attack. Flip the token to its damage sign after the first use. So I'm going to target the, the area that the Hulk is in because there are six Six zombies in there. I'm going to roll six. Now, this is an attack, not his assassinate, so I don't get to use his ability. So I'm going to roll this, and I hope for the best. Okay, so on a four or higher, on a four or higher, you get a hit. I rolled one four. <laughs> Do I have any uh, anything special? Discard before attacking, add plus one to dice results, and ignore target priority. No, I'm going to hold on to that. So I killed one. So when I killed this one walker, I gain one XP, which puts me into the uh, the orange. And I actually forgot for vision on his last turn, he actually gained an action. So now that I'm in the orange, I actually get plus one action because of the experience. So I can actually do this one again. And I feel like I should to help him out. So I'm actually going to do that again. I'm going to choose this target zone again. And now this time I roll five. Okay, so I had to flip this over. And after I use this, that's it. it might... I don't know if this is the right decision, but I'm going to do it anyways. Okay, so now I get two. Two more hits. So I'm going to take two more of the walkers out here. They're dead. I gain two XP. And now I remove this. I can no longer use that special ability. And that ends the Winter Soldier's turn. Because that was his fourth action. So now, let's go ahead. Let's go with the Hulk. Let's... um. Let's first do our attack, and we're rolling three dice. I think for the sake of argument, I'm going to um, use two power to get two more dice, so that's five. Oh, that's beautiful. So I get uh, all, all hits, so all these walkers are dead. Maybe I should have done that instead of wasting the Avengers sign. So they're all dead, and the Hulk gets three XP, which puts them to 11. Sorry, that's vision. 3 XP, which puts him to 8. That's his first action. His second action, I could open this door and reveal what's inside. That would be 2. And then I have 4 actions. 3 and 4. I could do that. Alright, let's do that. I'm going to open this door. As my second action, I open this door, and right away I'm going to spawn. I'm going to spawn two Brutes, and they activate. So these two Brutes, we'll start with this one. These two Brutes, they activate, and they move into here. Then I have to spawn one for this room. And this is a extra activation. So all zombies, one extra activation. That's not good. So these zombies are going to move into here. These zombies, now they get to choose where they want to go. So I'll, I'll do half and half. I'll do two over here and two over here, because they're all equal distance. These ones are going to move one in, this one's going to move one in, and these three are going to move in here. Oh, I guess I should have kept that Avenger symbol alive. Oh well. Okay, so that's it. That was the extra activation, and let's reveal who the bystander is. The bystander is J. Jonah Jameson. So he's going to come out, and he's going to be in here with the zombies. Alright, so... That was one, two, 
He has two more activations. So we're going to go in here. Three. Or should we? No, let's go three here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is not... Uh... Okay, we'll go three. Three, and then we're going to do four, which is an attack. I don't have any more power-ups, so I'm going to roll three dice. I get one hit. So because the Brutes have a toughness value of two, nothing happens. Because it has to be all in the same attack. So that ends the Hulk. So it was... Wait, that was one, two, three... Oh, I have one more, so I'm going to roll one more attack, and the same result. I only got one hit. Okay. So the Hulk is done. Now it's Spider-Man's turn. So, sorry, I forgot to do this. When Spider-Man, when discard, when enemies enter your zone, immediately move one, uh, move one zone, ignoring enemies. Now, do I want to do that? Or do I want it to just stay there? No. But I'll discard this one. True Grit. I should have done this. Sorry. Discard when enemies move into your zone, perform one free attack targeting your zone. So I'm going to discard this one. When I discard that one is when these walkers moved into here. I get to do a free attack. So I'm going to roll three dice, four or higher. And I get two fives and a three. So I get to kill these two. And I gain two XP. That was for free. So now it's Spider-Man's turn if I want to. So he can go in here if he wants to do an attack. Uh, it might be might be worthwhile but that puts him at high risk he could go into here and try to get the objective one two and three or <laughs> let's see vision already picked that one up so maybe well this is kind of this is kind of tricky so let's go one two let's do this we're gonna go one, two, and as his third action, he's going to attack those zombies in there. And he's going to spend all his power. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So I roll, normally I roll three. With four, I'm going to roll seven. So I'm going to roll an extra dice after this. Okay, so I get... Three hits, because it's on a four higher. I'm going to roll one more dice, and it's a four. Okay, so that's actually good enough. So I have four hits in total. Each of the Brute has a toughness of two. So I kill those two, and Spidey gains two XP. And that ends his turn, because that was his third. One, two, and three. Sorry, one, two, and then third action. Okay. Now it's Vision's turn. Vision is going to, let's see, he's going to come out. He has four actions that he can take. So let's go uh, one, two, and as my third action, I'm going to do a ranged attack into this area. I'm going to spend, uh, actually before I do that, sorry. So that was one. One, two, three, and four. No, three, attack, four, move. Yeah, okay. So let's do, as our third action, uh, we're going to attack. We're going to attack, and we're going to add two extra dice by spending two power, so that gives me five dice in total. I'm not expecting anything great. <laughs> so I get two hits, which is enough to take out one brute. So I take out one of the brutes. I gain one XP to nine. And as my fourth action... I'm going to move back one. I'm going to move back here. Because they're coming in. I'm the one with... Oh, no. I have Sharon Carter. That's okay. So I'm going to flip that over. End of the hero phase. We now go into the enemy phase. And they're all going to activate. So we have a little bit of a problem here. Because uh, Winter Soldier is going to take two hits. We've got two. So he's down to one. Uh, these brutes are going to move up here. Oops. This brute's going to move in here. Uh, J. Jonas Jameson, he's going to stay in there because he's already with a group of friends and no bystanders have died, so we're okay. We go to the end phase, we exhaust, uh, unexhaust any cards that we've used, we're okay, and now we start the next hero phase, in which case we flip over their activation, 
and the Hulk gets two power. Uh, Winter Soldier gets one more. He hasn't used any. He's probably going to have to use it this round. Uh, Spider-Man gets one, and Vision gets one. Okay, so now we can go. So probably a good idea for Winter Soldier to do something. Um, I think if he, he can do four actions. So on his first action, he's going to do an attack. When he does an attack, as uh, I can automatically kill one of the walkers. So I auto uh, automatically kill that. I gain one XP. I'm assuming I can get an XP out of that. And I'm going to roll three dice. And I get a four. His is actually a hit of three or higher. So he actually kills this walker. And he gains another XP. And as that was his first action, as his second action, he's going to move into here. As his third action, he's going to attack again, but he's going to spend, uh, let's see, two. We'll spend two. We'll spend two power to get, sorry, that was only two dice he showed a roll, not three. Sorry, I made a mistake there, but that's okay. They were all hits anyways. So I'm going to roll four dice because I spent two power. I get two hits, which is enough to take out the brute, who has two defense. I gain another XP. That was my third, so one, two, three, and then four. I think four I will move into here. Okay, and we're gonna hope we're gonna hope for the best. Okay. That ends Winter Soldier's turn. And let's see, the Hulk. He has four actions, right? Yeah, let's just let's just try. Let's just try. Okay, so let's go with this. We're gonna do the Hulk. We're gonna move one. We're gonna open another door for two, three, and my fourth action. I'm gonna do an attack, and I'm gonna spend my two power to give me five dice. So I have five dice to roll. Okay, so I get. Three hits, which means I take out one brute. I gain one XP. And that's it. And that ends my turn. So I'm going to do vision next. Vision is going to do a ranged attack to hopefully help the Hulk out. So his first attack, we'll roll three dice. He gets complete miss. Well, not complete miss, but only one hit. That's his first. His second action, we will uh, do another attack. Uh, again, same. Third action, we'll do another attack. Again, the same. Oh, no. And fourth. Yes, okay. We actually end up with better. So we take out one more Brute. And he gains one XP. That was my fourth action. And so he's done. So now we've got Spider-Man. Spider-Man could rescue, and then we could try to do something. Um, but no, we want to get the objective. So for my first action, go into there. Second action, I'm going to pull up this objective. I gain 5 XP, which puts me to 9. I gain an extra action. So I could come back and rescue J. Jonah Jameson, but you know what? We're close. We just need to get this last objective. So that was uh, 1, 2... Uh, no, three, and then let's rescue him, four. We'll rescue him, four. And he has, if enemies spawn within two, range two, before any rush, you may spend one power to move one zone, ignoring enemies. Oh, that's interesting, okay. So that's the end of Spider-Man. So now we activate the zombies. The brutes are in the same zone as the Hulk, and they're going to hit him for two, so he's down to two health. And that's it. Now we do the spawn, right? We're bystanders, no bystanders. They're all captured at this point. So we're going to spawn, starting with over here. Okay, a bystander in danger. Spawn one bystander, then activate all walkers within range one. Fortunately, we don't have any walkers. But we're going to spawn a bystander, which we'll draw from the card. And it's Wong. So Wong, we'll put right here. Okay. And then we'll spawn another one uh, at this point. And it is two runners. 
over here. Fortunately, they don't activate. If they did, they would actually be attacking Winter Soldier and we would probably lose the game. And the third, oh, sorry, the two runners should be over here. Sorry, it's clockwise order. And it's four walkers on this side. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so once that's done, we unexhaust any cards that we use. We didn't, so we're going to flip our character activations and bump them up. So the Hulk gets actually quite a few. So he has one plus one, two, three. So he gets four. He gets full strength because of his ability. Winter Soldier goes up to three. Two for Spider-Man and two for Vision, and we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, so I think Winter Soldier should activate first. He gets four activation points. One, two, three. Well, there's going to be something spawning in here. Well, why not? First action, let's open that door. So we're going to open the door. And once we do that, we're going to spawn whatever's going to be in here. It is a runner times two. So two runners in here. Uh, and then we're going to reveal this bystander, which is Happy. Happy's going to be in there. So that was my first action. Two, three, four, and I'd be in here. Uh, the runners would move one, two. So that should be okay. And his special ability, I can knock out a runner. So I might be safe. All right, let's do that. We're going to go one. Sorry. Uh, so that was my first action. One, two, three, and then we're going to do four. We're going to take this objective. We gain five XP, which puts us to uh, 17. And that's it. That was my fourth. We flip that over. Winter Soldier's done. Okay. Spider Man. Spider-Man needs to do something. We eventually all need to funnel through here, but I think he's going to have to try to help, or someone's going to try to help someone. So one, two, and then three. Four? Does he have four actions? Okay, so one, two. My third action, I'm going to attack. I'm going to spend um, one power to gain an extra dice. So that's four dice I'm rolling. So that was one, two, three. So this was three, and I get at least one hit. So one brute is dead. I gain one XP. So I'm at 10. And as my last action, I will attack one more time, and I have enough to defeat this brute, and he gains one more XP. And that ends Spider-Man's turn. So thank you for helping the Hulk out. Now the Hulk can try to go and smash, but I think what we'll do with the Hulk is, oh gosh, one, two, let's do vision first. Let's go vision. Let's go one, two, and uh, one, two, no. Who's got pepper? Oh, Bucky has pepper. Oh no, that's not good. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. And as my fourth action, I'm going to do a ranged attack. And I'm going to spend two of my power to roll five dice. Okay, five dice. I'm going to try to eliminate those runners. Okay, so I get one hit. <laughs> so I eliminate one. So I eliminate one, I gain one XP, and that's it. I can't do anything else, right? One, two, three. That was it. Okay, so that was not not what I was hoping for. Okay. So Vision's going to get attacked for sure next round. Uh, Hulk has an opportunity. One, two, three, and then four. But he puts himself in danger. So I think what we should do is with the Hulk, I think we'll just draw a heroic trait. One. Discard when moving. You can move any additional um, discard. Sorry, it says discard when moving, spend any amount of power to move that many additional zones without using additional actions, I guess. Uh, his second... Uh, his second... I can't put him in, in at a risk. This is terrible. 
Okay, we're gonna have to leave it. So we're just gonna end the Hulk's turn. He doesn't have to use up all his actions. Okay, so now the zombies activate. So these zombies are gonna move here. Okay. The runners have two actions, so they're gonna move one, two, and now they're in the same room with Bucky. And this one's gonna move one, and as his second action is going to attack vision for one hit. And now we spawn, starting with this side. Okay, so the walkers all get an activation, extra activation. So that means they're all moving into this room. It's about equal distance. So you know what? I'll spread that equally because one, so I'll spread that equally. I get to choose. Okay. At this spawn point, we're getting to get three runners. Oh, sorry. I have this runner standing up. You didn't even see him. There you go. And these runners too. What am I doing? <laughs> Okay, and then at this last location, it will be three more runners. If you run out of um, standees, instead of drawing from the next available batch, you actually just do an activation. So it's in your best interest not to have this too chaotic and try to manage it. So as long as there's a supply in each zombie type pool, uh, you're okay. Okay, so that was a spawn. And no bystanders died, so we're at the end phase. We're okay. We're going to start again. So Vision is going to power up. Spider-Man, Winter Soldier, and the Hulk is already full power, so he's okay. Okay, so Bucky is the one that we really need to help right now. All right, so I think what we'll do is let's start with Vision. We need to get him out of there. But let's clear a path first. So maybe we'll have Spider-Man clear a path. I'm not sure what to do with, with Bucky. Maybe what we can do is let's go ahead, let's start with Bucky first. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um, so he'll be moving in. So one, two, three, four to open the door, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I need to clear a path first, as best as we can. Okay, let's start with the Hulk. We're going to move the Hulk in one. My second action, I'm going to do an attack. Uh, I'm going to spend two power for two additional dice. That gives me five dice. And I get enough to kill the two walkers. I bump up my my experience and then that was one two I have two more actions I think that's it I think uh, my third action I'll draw a hero trait discard during your turn spend one um, one power to perform a free attack. Okay. So I'll leave that. And then I'm going to just end the Hulk's turn. Actually, I'll, no, he's going to power up quite a bit the next round. So I'll just leave that. There we go. So he's done. Uh, Vision, I think I'll start. Vision is going to go ahead and let's have him do an attack. As his first action, he's going to do an attack on that runner. Okay. So he, he's rolling three. Okay, so he gets one hit. That runner is gone. Uh, vision increases. So that's one. Uh, my second action, I wish I could open that door. Two, three, and then four. <laughs> Maybe clear a path. Okay, let's try. Let's try. Okay, so... So I did my first action. Second action, I'm going to open this door. Now, because the room's already been revealed, I don't need to, or the building's already been revealed, I don't need to do that again. So that's my second action. My third action is to do a ranged attack in there. I will spend my one power to roll four dice. And I get two hits, which is enough for these two walkers. And that gives me two XP, and I'm at 14. So that was my third action, right? So it was one, 
two, three, and then my fourth action, I can move. I'm going to move here because <laughs> I want to I want to be out of that space, okay? Okay, so that ends Vision's turn. Spider-Man's in a little bit of a pickle, but we might be able to we might be able to get out of this alive. So Spider-Man, I'm going to leave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Bucky. So let's start with with Winter Soldier. His first the first thing he's going to do is do an attack. And I'm going to spend uh, one Uh, one dice to roll three dice and using my assassinate I already eliminate one runner automatically and I gain one XP because of it and I'm gonna roll okay I get a five and a six and a two so that eliminates this other runner which gives me another XP I am now in the orange zone or the reddish light red zone that's it. That was my first action. Now my second action, I'm not going to rescue um, Happy because I already got Pepper. So I'm going to get out of here. So, so two, three, and four. And that's it. I'm going to stay in here. Okay, we're all congregating back together. So that ends Winter Soldier's turn. Spider-Man, I think... Okay, we're going to first uh, do a heroic trait. Discard during your turn to spend one power, select one zone within range two. All enemies in that zone activate and attempt to move towards your zone. I don't want to do that, so I don't like that one. That was my first action. My second action will be to power up. And my third action will be, I'm going to move into this zone. And my fourth action is, that's it. So if the enemy spawn within range two before any rush, you may spend one power to move one zone ignoring enemies well that's not going to help me because i'm leaving my friends behind okay so we're done and now we look at activating our enemies so we have these runners they each have two activations one two one two one two one two one two and one two now i don't think there's any Uh, any ability that I have that will help me. So they're all in here, and it's going to be a madhouse. So now we're going to do the bystander activation, which would be Wong. He's going to move in one here, and Happy will move in one here too. And that's it. Now we're doing the spawn. So starting from this side, we're going to spawn three runners on this side. So three runners. Oh my goodness, if they activate, I'm so dead. Then we're going to spawn on this side. Oh. Extra, extra activation for all runners. They all activate. We're dead. Because each runner has two activations, right? So let's start with this one. So we're going to start with this one. He's going to move in here. One. His second activation is he's going to attack Wong. Wong has his fight ability, so he's going to roll. And it's a three, so he dies. So he dies. He's perished. And all the heroes lose one power. And they lose one heroic trait. Okay, so they're going to lose this horror trait. I'll take this one out. I'll take this one out. Okay. Then this one moves in. One, two. One, two. So these two have already activated. Now all these guys are activating. And because they're already in the zone, they each attack twice. So we're looking at two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We're looking at twelve hits. We're dead. We're dead. Right? Because even if I took this... Took this down to one, right? So two, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve hits. So that's one, two, three, four. So I have four hits out of the twelve, which means all heroes got ambushed. Oh man, they all died. Oh, so close, so close, including Pepper. Even if I tossed Pepper out and used her as sacrifice, I'd fail the mission anyways. So. There you go, guys. What, a, what an abysmal failure. Um, I, I was hoping that I could have them in here. I knew the runners would get into the spot, but on their next activation, we would actually have a chance to mitigate them and destroy them and then move into the exit. But this activation card, this activation card just messed me up. And if it wasn't for that, we would probably have survived. So 
there you go, everybody. That was Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, the Marvel Zombie Light Edition, a zombie side game. And I like it. It is fun. It's not easy, um, especially when you are trying to manage the number of zombies coming in. You feel the pressure. And I like that. I like feeling the pressure when these zombies come up. And you know, as you gain more experience, yeah, you unlock more abilities, but you also draw in more zombies. I mean, some of these cards, if you look at, if you reach the red, um, where is it? Where are the walkers? Eight. Eight walkers. You know, eight walkers on a spawn. And then you have your, fortunately, I didn't have too many zombie heroes because they actually make it very difficult too. And fortunately, I was able to mitigate the two that came out. So I like that. I like that pressure. And I like the fact that you're you're trying to gain experience and you're trying to work together as a team. I like the fact that you can go in any order that you want. You don't have to go in a particular order. Whichever character you think would help and try to plan a few steps ahead, you can do that. And you're not locked into a particular, um, uh, you know, this player, player order. Um, I don't mind having the standees. It's fine because, because of the turnaround, you're killing zombies very easily. It, it, having, uh, having miniatures is unnecessary. I, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, having the miniatures for the heroes and the zombie heroes, that's actually a nice presence on the table. Uh, I like the way that you can power up. You have various choices that you can use, especially when you have a couple of heroic traits. Uh, when you have your bystanders, you can also use their abilities. So you're never left feeling like you've got nothing to do and all you can do is attack. There's m several options that you can do. And then you're trying to plan your escape route. You're trying to plan how you want to manage entering a building because you know when you enter the building, something bad could happen. Um, I like that I don't need a huge board tile, like four tiles for me is enough. I think if it was spread out, it could just drag the game on longer than it has to be. Um, I think around this amount of time it is good. It's not, it's not terrible. And I think it plays within that, you know, sort of half an hour, 45 minute range. Set up, set down is not too bad. Uh, component quality is, is good. I like it. And the fun factor, fun factor is there. Uh, you're, you're trying to survive and you're trying to work as a team. And this is definitely cooperative. I like that aspect. If I was playing with a few other friends, we definitely want to maximize our abilities and also play off the abilities of others. So you might want to go in a particular order because of their abilities that they have. So, um, so there you go. Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, uh, a game that unexpectedly came faster than I thought. And I'm very happy with it. Uh, looking forward to going into the holiday season, maybe tossing this game on the board and playing with my nephews and, and seeing how well we can survive this zombie apocalypse. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, stay bored.